But let's talk about a much more serious, well, an equally serious story. Myla's baby was unfortunately transferred to the mother and baby unit. The four weeks I spent there, I can say, is that awful experience that I've had, the most awful experience I've had in my entire life. This is just one of the heartbreaking stories of women who go to give birth at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital. In a documentary done by my colleague Seth Kwame Wate, who will be joining me later in the studio, you hear a lot more of these gruesome stories. as a result of pregnancy and complications in Confanochi. This unit is highly congested. It was originally built to accommodate about 60 babies, but now between 100 and 120 sick babies are kept in this unit on a daily basis. So right now we have way exploded beyond what we can possibly take. And as you, as you can see, you can see the mothers sitting very uncomfortably, all squeezed up together. And this is not even all the mothers. There's still another group out there waiting to come and feed. Another group yeah. waiting to come? Yeah. So they yeah. run shit, sometimes something like that? Sometimes, because the benches are not enough for them. Yeah. So they're going to be here for how many minutes? Um, well, they will... Um, th there are basically two groups of mothers. Some, uh, the premature babies are doing two hourly feeding. So they come every two hours, feed their babies for as long as it takes. And for a premature baby, it can take up to one hour or more. And then the bigger ones come every three hours. So, you know, as soon as they finish feeding their babies in the next 20, 30 minutes, they will go and then the other group will come. That is a gruesome story, as I said, but we, there's a lot more in the documentary that we're going to air on Monday. Seth Kwame Boateng is with me in the studio. He'll tell us about special assignment. What is it about? What is it supposed to achieve? And what is in this documentary? Just so you know, I'll be taking you through some scary statistics very soon. Seth, you're welcome. Thank you, Gifty. Good to see you. Good to see and you I think too. I like your beard, by the way. Okay, let's get to more serious business, Seth. What is this thing all about, special assignment? Okay, so it's another joint news product. Um, it's different from the hotline documentaries we have been running for years now. Mm. This one is uh, a detailed investigative documentary okay. that we are starting to um, keep pressure on those in charge, the powers that be, to act on specific cases. Mm. So we are starting with this because there is a problem. The problem was envisaged 
43 years ago, mm. and nobody is willing to help us solve that problem. So we, are, we have done this, we have investigated and done this to keep pressure on those that are in charge to mm. deliver on what they're supposed to do. Okay. So that's what special assignment is about. What special assignment mm. is about, and what are we looking to achieve with this? So with this particular one, there is a building which was started um, way back in 1974, mm -hmm. which has not been completed. And it's the reason more mothers, pregnant mm -hmm. women are dying, the reason more babies are dying, the reason mm -hmm. babies are picking infection from the hospital. So we want to draw the attention of all those concerned and make sure they fix this problem, the, they, they make sure they finish the construction of this problem. It's been 43 years now, as I said, the general to a started this way back in 1974 uh, because he had seen the problem and he wanted to fix. So that's, that's our aim. We want to make sure okay. uh, lives are saved. Right. Let's go, into, let's go into the documentary. What's in it? So the documentary, I talk about how women would have to, pregnant women would have to join Q um, to deliver. And um, I also talk about how uh, those who need uh, immediate CS, zero mm -hmm. session, are also compelled to join Q because the entire Confonochi maternity area mm -hmm. has just two theaters, just two theaters, and only one is fu was functional the time I went there. So if, um, let's say, three women are rushed in who yeah. need immediate CS, they can't operate on them. They would have to do one and later take care of the other. So that's a problem at Confonochi. And, and another thing you people will know uh, has to do with the number of ch babies who die every day. At times, as much as 10 babies die in a day. Right. Yeah. And that's very worrying. Like I said, this is a story that we'll be giving you statistics on so we can paint the picture of how dire the situation is. Seth is still here with me, but like I promised you, we're going to give you some statistics as to what exactly is happening at the Kofanochi Teaching Hospital. Well, let's start with the last five years. What has happened in the last five years? So we're looking at maternal and child deaths that has happened in um, uh, Kofanochi Teaching Hospital. So right in 2012, we had 152 mothers dying. And sometimes it sounds like a statistic. It sounds like a figure. It's just a figure. Mm. But imagine, consider your mother, your sister, your wife could be in that number. So we're looking at 2012, 152 women who could be your mother, your sister, your wife. In 2013, the figure goes down from 152 and it gets to 126. Mm. But it doesn't really change because in 2014, you still have a number of 108, which is still in the same region. It's still in the 100 uh, regions. In 2015, we we'll still remain with 100 because it's just about 2 on top of 100, which is just about 6 difference. If you look at 2016, we go down further and then we have 91 total, 579 women. So in the last five years, in Kumase or in the Ashanti region alone, 579 women, mothers, someone who could be your wife, your sister, your daughter, have died just going to give life. This is what has happened. Now, let's look at uh, a little bit of analysis. Now, the doctors there say you will see the gradual decrease in the number of mothers who have died. So there's a gradual decrease in the, mother of, uh, the number of mothers who have died at delivery. But you cannot say for sure, uh, for, for sure that these people did not die because there's any uh, improvement in the facility mm. or that there's any improvement in how the deliveries are done there. Now, let's move forward and look at the explanations that are being given. Okay, so if you look at the, uh, the change, well, let's look at the deliveries, basically, before we can uh, begin to talk about the reasons that the doctors are given mm. and even that it's a conjecture so the explanation that they're given we'll go into that but look at the deliveries in 2012 there was 12,000 deliveries so in 2012 12,000 children came into this world uh, 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 in the ashanti region in 2013 11,188 in 2014 is 1,031 in 2015 is 9,000 653 and in 2016 is 8,884. So you notice the decrease in the number of deliveries and then the decrease in the number of maternal deaths. But this is the explanation that doctors there give. They say 
that these are possible causes. And at this point, it is still a conjecture because they cannot be sure about that uh, um, said. So the reason they gave is that some women, perhaps, are delivering outside Confano teaching hospital. Others are perhaps reverting to the district, private, or maternity homes. The other reason they gave is that, well, perhaps women are using more condoms. Uh, well, men are using, well, yeah, it's all in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the, the group, right? Okay, so perhaps the men are using condoms, the women are using condoms, or they are on some kind of family planning system. So perhaps there is some kind of contraceptive usage that is causing the numbers to decrease. And this, at this point, I, I must say, it is still a conjecture. Seth, I would like to take your, your, a quick uh, review from you on this before we get into the number of children mm. who have died and mm. the number of children who continue to die on a daily basis. Mm. Seth, before we go into child, let's talk a review on okay. what's happened, uh, what oh. we've just explained. Okay, so the, the, one of the doctors, Professor uh, Balfour, told me that it's not as if um, the situation has improved. Mm. Um, deliver, um, for, for which reason the numbers are decreasing. Right. Yeah, he, he explained. And when you go to the place, what is happening, mm -hmm. the reason we have these numbers ha uh, has to do with um, equipment okay. and space. Okay. So, for example, one doctor told me, said, don't go and say people should bring us beds, incubators, and all those things. Okay. We have no place to put them. Listen, okay. we have no place to put them. What we need is space. Okay. Because here's the case. So they need both, perhaps. But they what they need first is the space, space. to keep those. Exactly. Uh, 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 so that they can accommodate more women. So, for example, okay. when you go to the, uh, the, uh, the labor ward, they have one room for mothers who have reached their first stage. Okay. You have to get to the second stage before you are rushed to the um, labor ward to deliver. Okay. Um, they, they put you on the uh, two delivery beds. And they have just two delivery beds. Okay. Fact. Um, uh, I said, if I give it. <laughs> so imagine, imagine um, about four of them are rushed in. They can take care of only two at the same time until they'll tell the rest to queue. Okay. Okay, and the women are dying again also because when they need surgery, they are bleeding, they need immediate surgery, mm. they are asked to join queue mm. because the theater is occupied. They had two theaters but one wasn't functional when I went there okay so pregnant women in need of CS are also in queue waiting some die in the process some die while waiting so that's the urgency of the situation that's the reason we are recording these reason. numbers okay. there okay so you see those beautiful babies there and I mean it's it's touching some of them really uh, scare me you just look at them and it's so touching mm -hmm. but scary because at that point where they are they are between life and death, exactly. and we're trying to exactly. save them. Now, let me give you the statistics that really scare me personally. Child deaths. We're looking at a fifth of the babies delivered at the Confanoti Teaching Hospital, the doctors say, end up dying. That, for me, is very worrying. Six to seven babies die on what they are calling a bad day. So on a bad day, six to seven babies mm. die on the hands of the doctors who try to deliver them. Ten die on a worse day. So if it's a bad day, you're looking at six to seven. If it is the worst day, you're looking at 10 children, mm. 10 presidents, 10 ministers of state, 10 what, journalists, so many of them that were losing. Averagely, three or four babies die in a day. So we keep breaking it down. We're starting from, uh, from, six to, uh, from 10 to six to seven, and now we're looking at three or four. And this is happening on a daily basis. Daily basis. That's scary. Occasionally, you could have a baby that could be so bad due to severe birth defect uh, because there isn't much you can do mm. about that. And that happens everywhere, yeah. basically. But the doctors there at the Confanoji Teaching Hospital are worried. We here at Multimedia are worried, and so should you. And so what do we do? Which is why we're putting mm. together this program, exactly. the special assignment. Special assignment. To keep authorities exactly. in check. And it's, it's interesting that... A champion, General Kutu, a champion started this way back. Nine regimes after, right. we've not been able to complete this structure. And it's a 995 bed capacity facility, hmm. almost 1,000. If we're able to finish this, the lives that we can, we can save, um, give to. Right. Okay. Well, we're wrapping up on this discussion, but let me just tell you what the UN estimations are. We're working, I mean, as the world, we're working with sustainable development goals. And a part of the sustainable development goals that actually are supposed to be dealing with this, uh, 
we they've got some estimations that we may not meet. So we're looking at uh, the estimations. They're looking at a reduction of global matern maternal mortality ratio uh, uh, to be less than 70 per 100,000 live births. But if you look at the trend analysis so far, look at the figures that we've put together, it appears, and it is a fair statement to make, and it's a fair projection to make that achieving the SDG target will be very hard, especially if the facilities at Comfort North Institution Hospital remain the same. Mm. Ted. So we have to fix, we have to complete that structure. And that's all that the people in Kumasi are calling for. That's what the patients are calling for. That's what the doctors are calling for. Right. And they want us to help them speak to those in charge, authorities, those who are willing to help them. They want us to speak to them. Because, Gifty, you don't know when your sister may end up there. Right. You don't know when your daughter, your wife, or relative will end up there. Right. And I, I told somebody this morning that I didn't know a neighbor had gone through this. Mm. I put on social media uh, the promo, and I got a call from him. He said, said, you are talking about this. I've experienced it. Wow. 2013, I went to the hospital and I met him. The wife had given birth. He was so excited. No knowing as soon as I left, the baby died. Wow. Then they had another baby. The baby died again. Had the mother and baby in it. The third time, he nearly lost the mother and the baby. And you will be asking why they will still want to go to Confonache. Remember, right. it's a referral center. Okay. So all complications are rushed to the hospital because that's where the experts are. So that's the issue, and we must fix this. Okay. And that hospital serves about six other regions. So you might think you are in a yeah, western region, region, central region, so you but don't they care. All go there. Like, yeah, you, they are rushed there okay. all the time. So that's the okay. issue. That's the issue. So you tell us that in the documentary that we're expecting to air on Monday, that people are expecting they would get a better picture exactly. of how dire the situation and is. And I believe that it will be so compelling you would have no reason but to ask. We need to hold these people. So Monday, 8 p.m. here right. on mm -hmm. this channel, you can also listen to us on Joy, Radio, Radio and Love FM. Okay. Other affiliate stations also pick. Those who want the tree version yeah. can watch Adum TV at 9 p.m. Okay. Those in Kumase can listen to Insure FM at 9 p.m. But Adum FM is 8 p.m. Monday, so don't miss. And if you're in okay. Kumase and you want to join us, because we are screening this documentary live in at Confonachi too. So if you're in Kumasi and you want to join us, feel free. Okay. And the whole of next week, we're going to spend two more days at the Confonachi Teaching Hospital, the AM show, the Joy FM Super Morning Show. We're going to be there discussing this, trying to see what we can do to save lives of babies and mothers. Okay, this is something that we should do. 579 mothers, women, dying because they're going to give life. It's not funny, and it's not something that we can really sleep on. Seth. Thank you very much for the good work that you're doing. So on Monday at 8 p.m., we're airing this documentary here on Joy News and on Joy FM. You can also catch it on Adom FM, on Adom TV, on Ishua FM, on Love FM. We're covering all the spaces, and you want to be a part of it. Let's see how we can prevent people, children, women, from dying. This is Still the Pulse with me, Gifty Andopia.